if you own a gun in California, you should have an attorney that specializes in California gun laws. On your speed dial, that is. Because if you ever have legal matters that involve firearms, you need California firearm lawyer John Dillon. Especially if you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you just need to know that your guns are California compliant. Our trusted firearms attorney is John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. Put his number on your phone right now, 760-642-7150. That's John Dillon's California firearms lawyer, 760-642-7150. John is the undisputed best in California, if not the nation. Without a shadow of a doubt. Love the guy. So our next guest, I'm really excited about. I've known him for a few years and respected him just as long because he's a fantastic warrior when it comes to the Second Amendment. I'm sure most of our listeners have heard him or seen him, um, uh, but not for the reason we have him on the air, which is why we wanted to have him come in and or you know call in and, and talk to him about exactly what he's doing. Mr. Craig Deleuze, how are you, sir? I am too blessed to be stressed, sir. How are you doing? Good, man. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to use that. <laughs> He used to so the first time the first time you have to give me credit after that it's all yours. <laughs> so he used to do a, a YouTube uh, show mm-hmm. about Second Amendment called Coffee with Craig, and then uh, and then they they went and uh, at Shot Show did a, a night show where he would interview people and he called it uh, it couldn't be Coffee with Craig because it was at night right mm-hmm. so it was booze with the lose, <laughs> <laughs> which was awesome. I always really liked that. Oh, Craig. it was. It, you know what? It was a lot of fun, but you could tell as 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 the night went on, the interviews got a little bit, a little bit hairier. Mm. And I would just sit there, and every time my glass got empty, there was another drink put there, <laughs> like magic. So, my like friend, magic. what are you what are you doing now? Let's tell tell everybody why you're on the show today and what you're up to. Well, I, I will tell you, I've been politically active for thirty years. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly as a volunteer. I've worked in the California State Legislature for a number of really good conservative members. And uh, i got to be honest, I've been looking at the way things have been going lately, uh, and I decided, I look at, in particular looking at the way things have been going at the federal level, and I decided, you know what, it's time for me to finally throw my hat in the ring and run for U.S. Congress. Congratulations. I think that's a fantastic idea. Now, what, what's uh, talk about which district are you, are you running in? So it is the 6th Congressional District, which is located in uh, the northern, northeastern suburban part of Sacramento County. So it's actually in Northern California. The seat is uh, newly formed. Uh, the current member that's in it is a gentleman named Ami Barra, uh, clearly anti-Second Amendment, uh, anti – well, let me say – let's talk about what he's for. He's for big government. He's for – confiscating your firearms and taking away your Second Amendment right. He's for more taxes. He's for socialized medicine. So for all of those reasons, uh, I think he is wholly unqualified to be a representative uh, of the uh, federal government's lower house. Now, I think a lot of people would hear that and go, well, he's from Sacramento, of course. But they're confusing, you know, what comes out of Sacramento with who lives in the Sacramento area. You know, just because all these horrible decisions are made in Sacramento, you know, those folks show up you know, mess up the, the state, and then they fly back to their district. They don't actually vote in Sacramento. So how how did he get elected? Because Sacramento and, and the surrounding area is not exactly uh, – that doesn't sound representative. Am I, am I wrong? Oh, no, you're, you're not wrong. When he ran – so what happened was the he was representing a different district. And when they redrew the lines because of the census – he was actually drawn into the same district as two other as two other liberal Democrats. And so he actually had to have run in a different district. And, you know, in California, you may not know this, you don't actually have to live in the district that you are running or seeking to represent. You just have to live in the state. So he ran for a district that was as close by as he could, as he could get without necessarily having to move. And, uh, he ran, quite frankly, he tried to run as a moderate Democrat, someone who didn't stick out. If you notice, you probably don't hear his name much in the news. You know, he's not out there lambasting Republicans, calling, you know, talking about ultra MAGA this and ultra MAGA that. He's just kind of quietly voting for socialism, quietly voting to take away our Second Amendment rights, quietly voting 
uh, to, to expand the size and scope and control of the federal government. That's interesting. So uh, the important point behind all that is there's a real chance to replace this incumbent. It is the – and by the way, you might, you might want to know this. So California actually is a, is a, played a significant role in us actually taking back the House. There were a number of seats that we both held in Congress as well as won that are in fact the difference that makes – Republicans, the majority in the House of Representatives. This seat, uh, it's basically a, what's called a D plus seven, meaning it's a it's a, a Democrat leaning seat by about seven points. Hmm. It is the closest or one of the closest seats that's actually not currently held by a Republican. So with the right <laughs> candidate, with the right message and with the right resources, this is a race where California can actually add Republicans can actually add another seat in the House of Representatives. And, and additionally, what you were talking about, it sounds like even though it is a D plus seven, which by the way is is practically a, you know, statistically that's practically that's practically a tie. That's you know, D plus seven is is almost a tie. I mean, it's obviously they have a, a few more, but you know, you start getting down into the weeds. Um, that district may actually um, favor. Uh, Republican voters, depending on how the the not declareds usually break, but um, that that's somebody that the district didn't pick. That's somebody who picked the district, which is an added benefit. So it's not like this is a, a Democrat who even fits um, that that D plus seven district. So I mean, this is a huge. This is very very big. Oh no! In community event after community event that he shows up to, he just does not seem comfortable in his own skin. Uh, and, and that's because he's lying about who he is in order to – he lied about who he was to get in office, and he's lying about who he is to stay in office. And, you, you know, Mike, if there's one thing that you know about me is I, I'm going to be me. I'm going to tell you exactly who I am, exactly what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it. And because I figure if i got to lie about who I am to get in office, then i got to lie about who I am to stay in office. No, you're solid as a rock, and that's one of the many things – um, I've always appreciated and respected about you. Um, I think that your your character and your your backbone and um, you know is probably only second to your good looks when it comes to all your qualities. So, um, but it's a, <laughs> it's a close second, man. I got to tell you, it's a close second. So, uh, <laughs> talk about um, how much do you think the Second Amendment and your advocacy uh, will play a part in your in your race? Well, I, I, I'll put it to you this way. I know that in the, in, the, in the primary, it's going to play a major role in terms of, in terms of my support. Much of the district are, are very avid supporters of the Second Amendment. Um, we have a very strong uh, group, statewide group here, California gun owners. We have very strong local organizations that support the Second Amendment. Um, so I think it's going to play a significant role. Also, initially, it's going to play a major role. I mean, most of my work over the last decade has been in advocating uh, advocating for the Second Amendment, fighting here in California, fighting in Washington, D.C. So a lot of the relationships that I have, a lot of the people that know me, a lot of the people that I'm hoping will, at least in the very beginning, be donating to my campaign are going to be Second, are going to be second Amendment folks. Now, in the general, they're going to try and use that against me. Because they're, 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 there's this strong belief out there, well, every time there's a crime that involves a firearm, it's because of those Second Amendment folks out there, the, the folks who are supported by the NRA. They're the ones that are the problem. But see, understanding how the policy works, already understanding the numbers, being able to debate and talk with them about, well, wait a minute. We've seen over the last seven, eight years, or let me clarify, over the last decade, We've seen a consistent flow of anti-gun legislation pass here in California, yet we've seen crime go up. We've seen violent crime go up. We've seen violent crime involving firearms go up. So you can't blame gun legislation because we've already got everything in California that the rest of the nation wants. But what I can point to are law, our, 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 our criminal justice, quote-unquote, reform. You know how Kamala Harris wanted California to get smart on crime which basically meant decriminalize crime, let criminals back out on the street, and tell them that if you commit a crime, yeah, you're not going to wind up back in jail. Hmm. And now those policies also have passed over, these, over this last decade and can be tied directly 
to the increase in crime, in violent crime, and violent crime involving firearms. So a lot of it's going to have to do with messaging and the ability to get that message out there. You know, it's, it, I got to tell you, look at all the pieces that are falling into place, Craig. I mean, you're somebody who's uh, well spoken. You're comfortable in front of the camera. It's been a part of your career for a while. You're connected in the political realm. You live in the right area. This is uh, this is pretty exciting, man. We well, you know it, it is real exciting, and, and I'll be honest with you though. The one the one area where I'm having to do a lot of work, and the one area of challenge has to do with fundraising. Money is always I, always I, an I, issue. Money. Yeah. You're, it's hard to be considered by the quote-unquote powers that be a serious candidate if you don't have the ability to raise money. I'm not wealthy. I work an 80-hour work week in order to, you know, to, in order to take care and pay the bills and all of that. Because, in part, because I chose to work with people I want to work with on issues and with organizations that I believe in. And so, you know, I enjoy what I do. So I, I don't, I don't worry about the fact that I work that I work that long. But it's not been something that has allowed me to. Uh, I'm not. I'm not of billionaire status. So the well, main how, thing is, and this is what I keep. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's what I was about to say. The main thing and the biggest challenge is, I think a lot of people think that. Well, if I can't give a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, then what? What good can I really do? And what people don't understand is, the Republican Party in particular used to be the party of small donors. It used to be the party where. You know, one person would give $50, and then they'd get 10 of their friends to do the same, and they'd get 10 of their friends to do the same. And when it comes to the Second Amendment and fighting in the Second Amendment community, I will tell you that's how the NRA is funded. That's how GOA is funded. That's yep. how FPC is funded. It's yep. it's by the individual small donor. Yep, that's how San Diego County Gunners is funded too. Hey, so we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back. The first question I'm going to ask you, because I want to continue this conversation – because I have a, 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 a more, I have a point to make about it. Is I'm going to ask you when we come back how how much money are you going to need to raise to be effective in this race? So don't answer it yet. No, write it down because you'll forget. I will definitely forget. Yeah, write it down. Orange County Gun Owners is dedicated to preserve and restoring Orange County self defense rights. And if you live in Orange County and want to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, you need to join OCGunOwners.com/slash/join. Orange County Gun Owner is the organization to help get more pro Second Amendment officials elected. Become a member today, ocgunowners.com slash join. So we're here with Craig Luz. Uh, you may know him from all kinds of Second Amendment advocacy on YouTube, Coffee with Craig. He was uh, with FPC. He's done a, a ton. Everybody, everybody who owns a gun knows who Craig Luz is. He's now running for Congress, which is awesome. Craig, before we went to the break, we asked you um, how much money do you think you're going to need to raise to be effective? Well, here's the way, I'll, and I'll break this down for you. I believe it's going to take about a million dollars. And now here's the way here's the way that works. For each volunteer that gives of their time, that's worth $1,000. So it's a combination of grassroots people being willing to go out and knock on doors and make phone calls and the actual money and resources it's going to take in order to do the – the marketing, the advertising, the digital stuff, the, the lawn signs, and all of that. So I say that to say this. My, our, our goal is to raise at least $750,000 and then to have 250 volunteers for the campaign. So, and, and what I really want to make clear to people, um, you know, I, I'm, I think most of our listeners are in California. And if you're in California and you're a gun owner and you care about the Second Amendment, you're probably in a district that's already decided. You know, you're probably in a district where a Republican is definitely going to win, or you're in a district where a Democrat is definitely going to win. Um, this is an opportunity for you to take a couple of bucks out of your pocket and put it somewhere where you you could actually make a difference. So if you're in a district and, and there's a Republican who's definitely going to win, or there's a Democrat who's definitely going to win, you know, donate. Okay, you know, whatever, but. It's not really, you know, is it really going to make a difference? Probably not. But Craig could actually win. This is somebody that's really running, you know, uh, not because, uh, you know, he's interested in four or five other things. And, oh, by the way, the Second Amendment. There, here's a tried and true. He's one of us. He's a tried and true Second Amendment guy. And we could, and he's in a district that he could win, you know, and could actually make a difference. So I guess what I'm saying is, uh, you know, uh, 
get on the internet, go to his website, make just donate something, ten bucks, fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, something, and uh, help and Craig let, out. And let your friends, yeah, let your friends know that let your friends know that you did it and do the same. It's here's the thing I like to say: politics is war by other means, and war is about taking ground. Now, the way you are effective in taking ground is you look at okay, if I've already if I've already got this place where I'm at. I got to look to the north, south, east, and west. Where can I make a difference and help to take ground? And I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. Are you pro Second Amendment? Do you believe in the Second Amendment? Well, think about this. Who was the last candidate that you've been able to support who wasn't just a, okay, I filled out the questionnaire right and I believe in the Second Amendment, but someone who has actually walked the halls of the state capitol, someone who's actually testified before city councils in California, someone who's actually been out to Washington, D.C., been to the White House, been in Congress, talking with members, fighting for our fundamental civil right to keep and bear arms. And I can tell you, I, I feel pretty confident in saying you've never had that opportunity. I'm not sure. I can, now you do. I'm not sure I can think of a guy. Um, great. What, give, give them your website, and then, we're, and then I want to talk about some other things, and then we'll circle back and we'll give them your website again. But right now, those who are listening, I know you're on your computer. I know you have your phone in your hand. Go to this website right now and donate. Go ahead. It's craigdeluz.com. C-R-A-I-G-D-E-L-U-Z.com. So, and if you just Google Craig Deleuze, my website will be right there near the top. Yeah, it'll pop up. Craigdeluz.com. Ten bucks, fifty bucks, hundred bucks, whatever, um, whatever you can do. So, uh, what did you think of? Uh, so let's move on. Let's talk about guns and stuff. Um, what uh, What did you think about Gavin Newsom's uh, press conference and and wanting to amend the Constitution so he can gut the Second Amendment? What did you think of that? Well, I, okay, there were a few things. Just from a pure political sense. It makes sense for him because keep in mind, Gavin Newsom is an individual who is used to making big, bold promises and statements and delivering nothing, right? You might remember when he was mayor, he talked about his 10-year plan to end homelessness in San Francisco. How is that working out so mm-hmm. far? Um, you know, he's, he's the one who made the big, bold plan that by 2035, we're going to be – we're not, I mean, by 2050 or 2040, we're going to be – uh, zero emissions in the state of California. He's not even going to be around by the time that happens. But he gets the media credit for saying it. So keep in mind, Gavin Newsom is a guy who he's, he's a, for lack of a term, better term, he's a media whore, and he wants to get his name out there making promises that you know he can't keep. Now, having said that, there's absolutely no way he is going to be able to amend the Constitution to be able to do what it is that he says he wants to do. But he also demonstrates his lack of understanding of exactly what a, an amendment to the Constitution is or even what a constitution is. Constitutions are a set of fundamental values, and in particular with our amendments or our Bill of Rights, those are the protections of the individual against the government, telling the government you can't do these things. And here he is taking rights away from individuals, and he's doing it in such a detailed way. Well, no – you. Go fight, go fight and try and pass legislation that does that if, you're gonna, if he's going to try and do that. But he has a fundamental misunderstanding of, of, of politics, of policy, and especially of the Second Amendment. I, I considered it to be a joke, but I think he got exactly what he wanted was he got national press out of it. And he, he's a true believer, too. I don't know if a lot of people understand that. There are, you know, there are a lot of folks who run for office, and they get pressured into being anti-gun, and maybe they kind of believe it. and. You know, it's issue number eight on their list or whatever, um, but they're not really all that. They're not true believers. And, you know, Gavin Newsom is a true believer when it comes to being anti-gun, and, he, and he's been that way for a lo- long time. Uh, you know, he uh, was a part of uh, Prop, what what was it, Prop 63, right? Prop, yeah, he was a part of Prop 63, which once again was, a, you know, him trying to find a way to get out in front of the media so that he could promote his run for, gov- for governor. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So uh, up in Sacramento, how is do you, how is the how is the shooting situation up there? Do you guys have uh, ranges and the outdoor indoor? Where, where do you do your shooting up in Sacramento? Well, so most of the ranges uh, that are uh, around the Sacramento area are mostly are mostly indoor ranges. So I, I live about five minutes away from one here in North Highlands called the Gun Range. Uh, there's a couple of ranges. There's the Sacramento. Uh, there's the uh, Sacramento Valley. Not Sacramento Valley. There's Sacramento Valley. 
uh, uh, shooting center, which is about a 45 minute drive, 40 minute drive from where I, 45, 45 minutes. And that's now got the, got a full range of everything that you could want to shoot, but you have to be a member. It's hard to get a membership. You have to have, have a membership or know a member uh, in order to get out there to be able to do some, some, some real shooting uh, on some of the, whether it's the, the pistol action bays or, or, or some of the other, other uh, more exclusive stuff that they have out there. Uh, there's probably about five or six ranges here in Sacramento. Most of them are uh, indoor ranges. Uh, it's hard to find an outdoor range in Sacramento. But when you go a little bit to the outskirts, whether to the north or the east, uh, you, you can find a, decent, a couple of decent outdoor ranges. And then there's some BLM land up about an hour north of here as well. Because you get mostly the culture up there is is there's a there's a big hunting culture in the uh, Sacramento area. It's that's the, it's it's you know it's it's uh, suburban and rural. There's uh, yeah. and it's definitely the you know the beginning of Northern California. Um, and it, of course, you guys are the home of gun owners of California. Sam Paredes is right there, um, but you guys have a oh, lot yeah. of hunting going on, don't you? Well, oh, exactly. And you know, if you know the right people, there there are plenty of people who have plenty of uh, plenty of land. Uh, some of which they have their own little shooting ranges set up. So sometimes it's a matter of who you know. <laughs> have you talked to gun owners of California? Or I guess it'd be gun owners of uh, is it gun owners, gun owners of California? Do they endorse? And congressional races well, or gun owners of America? And, well, gun owners of America are the ones who endorse on the congressional races, and, and I and I have reached out. I have a very good relationship with Mr. Pratt over there, so uh, I'm I'm hoping that good relationship will end will will work out to an endorsement. Because like I said, and by the way, there, there are at least two other Republicans who are running in the race. I know both of them. I like both of them. Both of them are good conservatives. I just don't think they have the opportunity or the chance to be able to win in this particular district because. Well, I just think I'm better, I guess. <laughs> but um, I like the confidence. But well, I, I've, I've sat on the school board for 18 years yeah. in an area that is 60 percent Democrat. Uh, I've worked across party lines with folks with and and being a known conservative, I basically walk into most most political meetings in Sacramento with a big huge R on my chest, not because I put it there. So maybe it's actually on my back. I don't know. But um, but because I've never shied away from my values. Having said that, I also learn I also learn how to identify what a person's desire is, what they're trying to need, what their political goal is, and try and find a way to uh, to find a compromise that works that works for both. When we can work together, uh, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. How? And because of that, I think that also gives me an opportunity to be able to to, to be successful. I mean, I, on my board. I've been, like I said, I've been on the board 18 years. I've been board president 12 of those 18 years. Wow. And, uh, you know, once again, that's an overwhelmingly Democrat area, oftentimes with a Democrat-controlled board. Wow. How, how brutal is, uh, is it being on a, on a school board? I mean, school, I don't think people realize school boards are brutal. Even in a good district. They, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that, that we've done, and, I, and I, I've – I, I've really focused on trying to keep politics as a whole out of it. Hmm. So we do, we sit down with all of the other board members, all the board members sit down whenever we get a new board member, we go through our mission statement, our values, everyone gets a chance to have their input. It's a document that we all vote on and then we all govern everything according to that. So if it's like extra political, if it's something partisan, if it's not part of our core mission or our core values, it doesn't get on the agenda, and we've been able to – with that, we've been able to withstand – we went through eight years of declining enrollment. Then we went through the economic downturn. We went through COVID, and you know, through all of that, <clears throat> we have never had to lay off a teacher because of budget. Uh, we just got through rebuilding uh, the – what is it, 75 percent? No, I'm sorry, 80 percent of all of our schools we got through just rebuilding. Every wow. single one of our students is in a 21st century classroom. Nice. And then on top of that, we pay we pay our teachers the second most in the entire county of awesome. Sacramento. Give me your website, again, Craig. That, Give me your website so that right? everybody go to the website right now, donate money, support Craig, go for it. CraigDeluz.com. And that's Craig with a C. Craig with a C. What else would it be? <laughs> Could be with a K. With a K. <laughs> I guess you're right. Hey, you never know. Craig with a C. Thank you for clarifying, Dave. 
Hey, that's why I'm here. Is he staying or is he going? No, that's it. Thank you, man. Thanks, right, Craig. Buddy. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. If you're watching mainstream media, you're not getting the truth about guns. Gun Owners Radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the Second Amendment fight, the fight for your self-defense rights. You can watch our live stream on YouTube every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time. Or if you're in San Diego, AM 1170, FM 961, The Answer. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.